Here are two bubble wheel balancers. Bought from Amazon, but the same as Harbor Freight or Princess Auto if you're in Canada. And the only differences are, they all seem to come from the same factory. Is either the color of the base or which bubble balancer they use. So the one that I got that was red is if you can see the bubble there is a dot in the middle. Let's see if I can I'll lift it up. There's a dot in the middle. So you have a three-point alignment of the black circle, the actual bubble in the water, and the uh, dot on the bottom of the uh, green base. And the other one doesn't have the dot of the green base. So all you got is the bubble and the black circle, which depends on how you look at it, you'll get a different reading each time depending on your alignment with your eye and the bubble. So in my mind, if you can find one with a dot in the middle, like that one, it'll be easier to get a level reading when it's on the pivot point. So I'm out of the pivot point on the red one, which doesn't really, it's the stand that it comes on. And that one I left alone. And all I did, if you can see it, let's see here, is that I filed down the pivot point. Now this is hardened steel. It takes a while to file it down even this much. Thing is, you gotta be careful not to touch the point, which I actually did, but it's still pointy enough. So my goal is to see if I can get it to this shape here. This is a nail punch. I mean, that still a little too wide. I'm going to try to file it down even more. It's just hard to get beyond the uh, steel lip there. So to file down that, um, now it's hardened steel, so to file it down I used whatever I had in my hand uh, at the time, the tools I had. So this file actually worked the best, odd enough, because you go on the side lean it on there and get the angle you need and you can see your angle this is a little bit too rough but it is doable just a little bit too rough and this bottom catches on here too hard and can't get a smooth motion I also use a drill with some uh, stone on it a bit or even a dremel will work my dremel I think you gotta lower the speed because it will get away from you and you'll go over the tip and you're trying to keep that as pointy as you can and all you want is to get this shoulder which mine I think is still too fat let's just go down a little bit more try pulling it out the hardened steel but it's hard to get a grip on it and then pull it out and I know it's just press fit in there but I can't seem to get a good grip on it even with vice grips that's too large of an angle. So that what happens is when it goes into the base, this shoulder here is hitting the hole, which I'll show you, in this. Now let's see if I can get some light in there. That hole. It's too recessed, so what happens is the pivot, the hardened steel, rests within the shoulders and not actually the tip. Now you should try to get the base as level as you can. I'm in the garage, so it's naturally sloped uh, down towards the garage door. So I just put a level on each one and uh, use some paper, if you can see there, just to make sure I get it level, quasi-level. Now the reason is, I already did that one, because of the pivot point, if it's too much of an angle, it'll hit the shoulder of the dimple in this base. 
So now we're gonna test it. We're gonna shake them both. Let's get this level. And let's see if you can see if one moves more than the other. Now, you can see that it keeps moving. And it's keeping moving. Okay, let's try the other one. That's gonna take a while to stop. I even hit that one harder. And it's already stopped. The reason is that's hitting the shoulder and that uh, the pin is hitting that uh, dimple on the shoulders. So I've decided to take out the, uh, you can see there now, all you have to do is uh, use a punch from this end and you'll get this. So all I did was got a punch, centered it into that pin, actually it was hammered it a few times and it just popped right out. And if you can see that hole, it is too deep for the pin. So let's try that out. Closer. I got the grease on there, but yeah, it's a, you can you can feel it. It's hitting the shoulders and not even touching the uh, the pin. So it's bouncing on. The shoulder of the uh, the needle. Yeah, you can feel it. It's not it's not touching uh, the center. So the way this was engineered, focus there. That tip was never meant to sit at the bottom of that hole. The shoulder would just rest on the on the hole itself. To find its center balance. So the grease does help. The problem is if you ever chipped this, it would never sit right. Plus I think that's why it would just stop moving after a while. It wouldn't find a true balance or maybe it did. So compared to this one, I was trying to get it even like the um, nail punch but it was taking a long time and that metal was really hard. I was trying to achieve this shape for the pin and this is the bushing with the, the hole or the dimple in the middle and with this shape it would go to the bottom of that hole and not hit the sides of this hole and create a true center point for the balance. And the reason trying to get the, the unit plumbed, if let's say the pin is in the hole and it's not plumb, let's say it's too much of on, a, on an angle, the sides here will hit the side of the hole. So let's say this is your pole, the pin on top, let's say it's on an angle and you try to rest this on here, this side will hit the side of the hole and not try to find its natural resting position. So it doesn't have to be perfectly plumb, but plumb enough where you got enough clearance from the sides of the pin relative to whatever shape hole that is. Hope that makes sense. Another thought I had was using, making my own pace. <clears throat> Let's say drilling a hole on top of here, slightly smaller than the diameter of this, putting that in there and then using this as my pivot point, which is, wouldn't be a bad idea. So as I was trying to balance the tire, had an inspiration. Why don't I drill the hole bigger? Because drilling that point, that hardened steel pin here, is a pain in the ass. You can see some of the tools I was trying to use, and it 
takes a long time trying to get it to the point that I like it. So I decided to, not, why not drill, drill out, if you can see that in there, I just drilled it out with the drill bit. Didn't even take it out, I just, uh, my drill bit reached with my drill. Uh, I'm going to get the size later, tell you what size I use, you can use smaller. Why don't I just make it bigger? And you're just drilling into aluminum, that um, pin is just made out of aluminum, it's really soft so it doesn't take much to drill it out wider. Okay, trying to set up all the, how it was at stock. And I'm, I'm using the uh, the one the bulb bands with the dot in the middle, which I had to swap out of the other head. And as if anyone's have used these before, it takes a while to you think you got it until you move it, and it's, it decides to bounce itself somewhere else. It's hard to catch it on camera. Okay, if I keep my hand still, it doesn't matter if it's in the bubble in the middle. Let's just see if it goes in the same spot if I move it. Seems like it did. And that's, now if you can see the difference, that stopped at a different place than before. And if I try to just nudge it, no. Nope. That dot on the green base is close to the outside of that uh, air bubble. So I'm going to just try to adjust it. But just to show you, it depends where it stops. Let's try to get my hand still. It'll change. See, that's different now. Depends where it decides to stop. Now you can nudge it to the center and it'll stay. So without even, tire, without even putting the tire on, I can tell this is a lot harder. The, as it comes stock, it's difficult to get it to be in the proper balance position. So the mod of uh, drilling out that center hole wider so the pin can center itself in there better without hitting the sidewall of the hole is the better option. I'm just going to reapply some grease onto this. Now it's already been balanced. So it should be the same on both, and actually these two methods, your base doesn't have to be perfectly balanced or as long as it's on a level surface. Okay, there it is now. The only problem is, Drilling out the uh, hole wider, this thing will rock for a very long time. More so with a tire with some weight on it. As you can see, I'll put this stand down and you can see. Okay, I'll just rock it more. Now this will go for a while, and actually more so with the tire on it, even though it might be smaller movements. So that's with the, that's with the uh, filed down pin, and as you can see it keeps going. So let's put it on the unmodified pin. As you can see, I'll just hit it. See how long it takes to stop. And as you can see, it also takes a while.
What's good about this method is your base doesn't have to be perfectly level, just as long as it's on a flat surface, no rocking motion involved. Because really, the shoulder of the pin is not hitting the sides of the hole. So you see that it takes a while, so I actually have to go here and stop it to get it. So you might not even have to, when you're doing your test, just walk away until it stays still. So I'm going to try to do a comparison for you guys. This is the hardened steel pin not filed down but that aluminum um, where it sits on has been widened out with a drill bit and I got it dead nut center with those two weights over there which actually makes it nice because I can put one on both sides of the rim since they're even weights and before this tire had a lot more weights but I don't know if I can catch it on camera. It's hard to get it with the shadow and the light, but anyways. Then that center. And this will take a while to... If I just touch the tire, let's see if I can get that. If I touch the tire just a little bit. This will rock for a while. Now, just to give you a quick tip on balancing the tire since I watched so many videos on it is you can bounce it where the weight is on that on that side and you can actually spin the wire spin the wire spin the tire to the opposite end and see if the bubble stays in the center still which mine does now for the tire to perfectly stay still as you can see it's still moving ever so lightly bubble has a little movement in it since the tire is not totally still so I learned just to give it a few minutes on and so on I try maybe to stop it with just touching it lightly with my finger but that even um, gets it moving wrong so it seems like this will take longer since the tire takes longer to stop moving but I did get this centered and now I'm going to so I'm going to mark the position of those two weights mark the position of those two weights put it on the modified pin okay now I got it balanced on the modified pin and the modified hole the bigger hole on the bushing and those uh, weights are the exact same space space place as before warning if you don't put them in exactly the same place, it will actually not, it will actually show on the bubble. And also make sure you have the hole of the rim centered into the bubble bouncer hub. And the whole reason of doing this is because these wheels and tires combined, two shops can't get them. To be perfectly balanced. I'm on the highway at 140 kilometers an hour, 130 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I know it's kilometers an hour. I don't know what that is in miles per hour. I get a good vibration coming from the steering or from the body, from the steering wheel or the body. You can feel the vibration. And they both both uh, tire shops said it's either the wheels, the tires, or suspension. Thing is, I told them, I put my winter tires on, I go 140, and it's smooth as butter. So, it's either, it's not suspension, so it's either the tires or the wheels. Hence, why I'm doing this myself and trying to see if I can get it balanced. And the other issue I found is, both tire shops got these balanced. Now, they didn't take off the tire, off the rim, or anything. But that red dot should be where the tire valve is. So, 
My option is to break the bead on both sides of the tire of the, the tire and um, get the red dot to the tire valve side. And I'm not in the mood of doing that yet. I'm going to see that I already got the balance with just those two weights. And this tire had easily three times more weights than what I'm using here. So I'm going to see how that goes and I'll uh, post back. Well, I'm going to edit this video and then I'll post back how it goes at 140 kilometers and I'll put a comment in the description or add it, I'll add it to the video. So that is why I'm doing this tire job. If you have any better ideas or suggestions, please post in the comments. Try to read them. Subscribe if you like. And take it easy.